I met my wife at the very first gig. We made money and we drank free beer. And that's kind of the way it's been going ever since. Man, I just started saying it kind of like it was, you know, where I grew up, uh, where I was from, kind of the way my family was. Came out of the red clay, Georgia Pines, uh, right off 29. Man, just the way it rolled out, it was really just exactly the way my life is. So, And it kind of became, uh, I knew it was going to be a southern rock type feel to it, and it came, that's the way it came off. I was born son of a southern man, come from a long line of hard working hands. I came home from a trip and we were all hanging out and my son Cole was two years old at the time and, and all of a sudden a few minutes later after I was saying hey to everybody and you know where have you been flying whatever, we, we can't find Cole. He's missing. He's totally gone and uh, for 15 minutes we're looking for Cole. And, couldn't find him and finally my wife Angela went outside and he was standing next to my truck and he says I want to ride in daddy's truck I want to ride in daddy's truck and I just it immediately hit me I said I want to ride in daddy's truck I was like that sounds like a good, good song so that's where it came from it's just total uh, another real life event Why is everybody always blaming something on the moon? Is shame on the moon, blame on the moon? Uh, what's the moon done to everybody? Shame on the moon. Uh, Rodney Crowell wrote this song, and the first time I ever heard it was Bob Seger's cut, and uh, and it blew me away. I just loved the, the melody of it and the, the way that it uh, progresses, and, and it's just like a, it's total, uh, you know, it's life experience of a man and a woman, and I think sometimes you just have to say, you know, blame it on the moon, shame on the moon. It's just a, it's an excuse, really, of uh, not dealing with your problems. You know, chalk it up to uh, nature, I guess. I've always loved smoky bars, steel guitars, neon lights, and just a, a country band, a twangy country band. I kind of related it when I said this one night, we were laying in the bed, and it was after our second child was born, and I said, I said to my wife, I was like, you know, you don't get out of the house much after you have kids. I said, man, I've just got honky-tonkitis. I just want to, I want to go out and hear some music and, and drink some beer, you know? honky You know, these two kids have never really been anywhere in a small town trying to dream about what they might do one day when they get finally get that freedom to go somewhere. And what I tell everybody is it's not it's not the car, it's the memories that you make when you're with the car. Oh, in that 65 Mustang red rag top, sitting up on blocks, the car wouldn't even roll but the red George Strait just recorded this, and it's supposed to come out on his album. It ended up not making the cut, the final cut for his album. And I thought, man, if George Strait picked this song, I mean, he's got a great track record of picking great songs. And I said, I I'm on it. I'm going to do this. And so uh, I did it. And the band, when they heard it, was really blown away with the song. And uh, I would say a lot of normal music listeners probably don't jump at it. My wife loves it. But, uh, but the band really teed off on it and started asking a lot of questions about it. And it came out so good and it's so perfect. It was exactly what I was looking for at the time. The whole room was different when Wade was in the room, and he was a big guy. He was six eight, probably two hundred forty pounds. Just, I mean, he looked like a super a superhero. 
and just such a nice guy, would do anything for anybody. And when he passed away, it was very sad, it was very tragic, and it just, uh, being at the, uh, at the funeral, I, I thought, this is not how he would have had it. And uh, I went home and I wrote the song. And it was exactly what he would have wanted. We've all been knocked down before But strong, keep coming back for more So I'd be hanging out with Max, and it takes a while to smoke a good cigar, you know. You're going to sit there for a good couple of hours, and then conversation and having a cocktail or whatever is going to drag it out a little longer. Well, I was getting home at 1 or 2, 3 in the morning sometimes, and Angela didn't really know Max very well, and, and she started kind of being suspicious, I think. And, and I told her, I was like, she's like, what are y'all doing so late? I said, we're just solving world problems, you know, one drink at a time. Ain't committing no crime Just solving world problems one drink at a time It is a story song and my friend Jay Knowles, the uh, guy that co-wrote The Gone, wrote this song and he had it on an album. He was playing it at some shows and, and I always loved it when he would play it. It had kind of a, a Mark Knopfler type feel, Dire Strait type stuff. And I was like, man, that's a really cool song. And it's a classic, you know, when you get rid of the girl, you never really get rid of her because everywhere you go, you're reminded of her. So it's, uh, you hear that a lot, but this, I just thought this was such a cool, a cool melody and a really cool song. And I always wanted to cut it and finally got the chance to do it. And man, I love, I love it. It's a different style for me, but I really liked it a lot. I thought I could get gone, find me a new song somewhere down the road. But I'm in Nashville, everywhere I go. I've always loved this song. I've been recording uh, only for the last few years, and it was, if I ever was gonna do a cover song, this was, was gonna be high on the list. And uh, I've played it live for at least 15 years, and I remember exactly where I was when I heard this song. I was sitting in a 83 white CJ7 that my cousin owned, and. And he said, man, you got to hear this. And he popped in this Greatest Hits tape, you know, a regular old tape. And uh, not, not a very good stereo, but, you know, he popped it in and I heard it. And I was like, the opening guitar lick had me. It's been making me lonesome, honoring me. My hair was jet black. They started playing and we hadn't even start gotten to the part where I was gonna sing yet. And I could already, I was having pictures of her in my mind and and the song was just so, so uh, clean and beautiful. And it, when it came time for me to sing, I literally could not get the words out. I was, I was, I mean, I was choked up. I was, it was, it was hard to get, I couldn't even sing until probably the second half of the song. <laughs> oh, with my better half. My better half, I'd be half a man without you. And my kids left the TV, which never happens, and they ran in and they started dancing all over the floor. And, and then I got through the first verse, got through the chorus, and then I stopped because I hadn't written the whole song. And they said, well, why'd you stop? And I said, well, I haven't written the whole song. And, and they walked off and left. And I thought, well, man, if I got them going on one, on one verse and one chorus, I said, I need to finish this thing. I love that summertime. I love that summertime. Turn the kids loose, watch them run. Long chair chilling with a cold one. It sure feels good in the sunshine. But I love that summertime. Rise and shine. Fishing hole, mama cooking eggs on the old ground stove, daddy sipping from a coffee cup.